God bless you today. Susan Waldrop here, January 19, 2016. So many things are happening, not only globally, but in our lives personally. We that are in Christ stand, because when you know you've done everything you know to do, the word says to stand and know and be still and know that I am God. He will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will be with us even so unto the end. He says, lo, I am with you even unto the end. Thank you, Father, for this day. We ask that you bless our day now, Lord, as we go about our day. Be with us, Father. Anoint us, appoint us, send us. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you are moving in the lives of of our loved ones, Father, that we place in your hands, Father, for you are the one that know how to exactly bring them to the cross. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. As I sit here and I speak with you today and I share with you, there has been great construction going on in the property right near me, right beside us. And this to me is always prophetic. Things that happen in my life, around my life, I always see as it's possibly symbolic. I see this as change. Nothing remains the same except God. He says, I changeth not. God is the one that we hold on to in these times that are not going to get greater and one more wonderful, except the anointing of the Lord will get greater. But I can tell you, darkness, and it is even so great darkness, is falling. It is at the door. It has not came inside of our room yet. And we pray to God that you and I are not here to see that. <clears throat> but the signs are all around, possibly we may see a portion of it. But whatsoever we see, we are secure in Christ, that he will take us through whatever we need to face. I found a website today upon leading of the Lord. It's called deagledeagle.com, Guide to Military Equipment and Civil Aviation interesting website. It basically shows you all of the upcoming air shows, exhibitions, the latest news, air, which Monday, January 18 was Air Methods Takes Delivery of First Bell 407 GXP Helicopter. You know, I have heard helicopters every single day I go out now. There is a helicopter overhead. It doesn't really matter what town you're in. There are helicopters flying above us. Fort Worth, Texas, January 18, 2016. Bell Helicopter, a Textron in, uh, Incorporate company, announced today the delivery of the Bell 407 GXP configured for helicopter emergency medical services to air methods. As revealed in March 2015, this is the first of many, that's the clue word right there, many, Bell 40X GX, uh, 407 GXPs expected over the next 10 years. Bell Helicopter and Air Methods commemorated the delivery at a special ceremony at Air Methods headquarters in Inglewood, Colorado. Inglewood, Colorado. Air Methods is celebrating this historic milestone that supports our mission of giving more tomorrows, said Aaron Todd, Chief Executive Officer. Air Methods, a lot of hard work went into getting us to this point, and we've put a lot of criteria in place when making this very important decision. We look forward to welcoming the new Bell 407 GXPs to our fleet. 
So moving on down, we wonder why is this important? We have enjoyed a long-standing relationship with air methods and have been proud to support the Bell aircraft in their current fleet, said Anthony Moreland, Vice President of North American Sales. The Bell so-and-so 407 GXP will support their life-saving efforts, but also provide the team with the expanded capabilities, safety, and flexibility to serve their patients. So what is going on is we are seeing the world prepare, prepare, prepare for emergency medical situations. The world is on the edge. It knows and that all these things are coming. We see all of the military, all of these things being built up, built up. And we are wondering why do we hear helicopters every day outside of our house, over the top of our house? What is going on? Well, I think we as believers know what is going on. The day is even so at the door when we will see all of these things come to pass with the coming of the Lord. And this is where we are. We are on the edge of the coming of the Lord. First Thessalonians 5, but, the top, but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. You have no need. Why do you have no need? Because if you're in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is in you, you have God Almighty inside of you. He speaks to you. He shows you things that are coming. It is wonderful that we witness to each other, that we encourage each other, that we pray for each other because he tells us to do this. But even so, <clears throat> but of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. It's, it's obvious. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they say, shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. This was the big word that I kept getting from the Holy Spirit this morning. When they, you know, everything is building up, as we see in the day, every day, there, there is more terror happening, all of these things. And I see this summer being very pivotal. I will be highly surprised if we even have a new president. I don't know what's going to happen. God Almighty is the only one that really knows because the devil has an antichrist in place. He has several antichrists, I believe. He doesn't know himself. The devil doesn't know God's plan, so he has several people in place. But as we see the price of gas go down, you know this is financially crippling Russia. And when Russia is push, pushed to the point that it will not be pushed any longer, then they will push a button that will make a big difference permanently in the lives of America and probably a couple other countries that America is in alignment with politically. We are at the door of a great war. We are at the door of however it happened, whether it be uh, one of these EM, uh, EMT, EMP, whatever it is, things that happen up above the sky, you know, all of a sudden there's no electricity. How in the world are all of these helicopters that they're selling, they're preparing all of these things? They will not be flying. They will not be going anywhere. And we will not be going anywhere in cars because there won't be any gas if there is no car. Everything will come to a standstill. And then I truly believe we will see great, great 
horrors because animals will be hungry. People will go mad. And this is not a wonderful message that you probably wanted to hear today. The message, if anything, is that sudden destruction cometh upon them. You and I are in the Lord. We are saved. We are ready to face whatsoever we go through because we have eternal salvation. I do not believe we are here for great wrath that comes upon the earth. But whatever we face, we must be at peace. You know, it was said, I heard, that when all of this happens, the people will not even be forced to go to these uh, vacation places, if you want to call them that, that the government will provide. I think you know what I'm talking about. They'll go willingly. They'll go willingly because of the wild animals. They won't have gas in their cars. They won't be able to go to the stores. They will, they will begin to fight amongst themselves, man against man. And then when the government comes in and says, we will just take you to this little paradise hotel, you'll be taken care of. You'll be taken care of. And then they will be persecuted greatly. I believe that you will see many, many thousands of people die, not only from hunger, not only from suicide, which will probably be the death of the hour, but you will see as we see the population decline, we will see the rise of the man of the hour. And you and I must stay with the Lord, no matter what we face. For every day could be our last before he comes and takes us away. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. You see, the world is coming into great darkness, but you and I are not in darkness. God speaks to us. He shows us. You and, uh, it's, but you, but ye brethren are not in darkness that that, that day, not a day, that day. It is a specific day God has appointed. God knows his coming. That that day should overtake you as a thief. You are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of the darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Let us watch and be sober. In every situation you are in, whoever you talk to today, watch and be sober. For they that sleep in the night, and they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. We know people that sleep in the night, and people that are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. This is our hope, salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Whether we wake or we sleep, whether we wake or we sleep, whether we wake 
that we are awake when he comes, or whether we sleep, that we die before he comes. It does not matter, because salvation is our hope. For God hath not, not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain, obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. With, wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. This is crazy. So much is going on. We see the brethren fighting the brethren. They're trying to correct each other. They're trying to be the internet police over each other. It's ridiculous. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling and do what God has called you to do. This is the greatest thing that you can do for the Lord. You know, <clears throat> I think of these people, these entertainers, and they are impersonating other people for whatever reason they're doing this kind of a job. Better we be original for the Lord and not try to copy another person's ministry, be like them, ask for exactly whatever God has given them. We want it. This is envy. We should never envy. We should never be boasting of whatever God has given us, but we should be humble and thankful that God is doing anything with us because we were wretched. We were wretched. We were lost in sin. God loved us when we knew him not. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Everyone has a job by God. Everybody is called, appointed, anointed. Everybody. And to admonish you and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. <clears throat> and so, now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Jesus, in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesies, prophesyings, Quench not the spirit. How many churches have we been to? How many gatherings have we been to? Someone begins to pray and someone is, another person is upset that they're praying too long, that they're overstepping their boundaries, they feel. But are they truly overstepping their boundaries? Or is that person being just led by the spirit? What if that person was led to pray for 30 minutes? 30 minutes. Would we be patient? Would we let the Spirit, where the Spirit of God is, there is liberty? Would we allow God <clears throat> to have liberty? What if someone stood up in church that was a nobody, not recognized as a minister, a legal licensed minister, and the Spirit moved upon this humble person or a child would we all sit and let the child speak? In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove 
all things. Hold fast that which is good. Abstain from all appearance of evil. All appearance of evil. Many people I see make a ministry out of their past. It's wonderful to have your testimony, but leave your past in the past. Behold, I do a new thing with you, God says. I could speak about how I was in the entertainment industry. I was very blessed by God. Every audition, I went out to be a singer, to be hired as a singer. I was given the opportunity. I was accepted. I was in a name group. What does it matter? That is in the past. Shall I speak of how I went to, you know, these parties and I told the people, I don't want to, <clears throat> I don't want to smoke your dope. I don't want to drink your drinks. I don't want to go in this adultery. Here's my Bible. Let's have a Bible study. Did the world want to do that? No. So I sat in my hotel room. I read my Bible. And when I came home, I left the group. The manager was so upset. He says, nobody leaves me. You don't know what you're giving up. You're a fool. And then he began to curse. I said, I'm sorry. I found something better. I'm sorry. This lifestyle is not for me. I'm sorry. A little grandma stood up when I was going back to my dressing room and said, honey, are you a Christian? And I said, yes. And she says, then what are you doing here? I'm sorry. You can have the paycheck. I'm sorry. You can have the costumes, the wardrobes. You can have the television programs, the radio shows. I don't care. It's not edifying to my soul. And I am not being a good representative of why I was born. Quench not the spirit. Despise not prophesying. Are you telling people they have no business to say whatever they feel God is having them to share? Share what God has you to share. Leave them alone to God. Abstain from all appearance of evil. Well, we all know what evil looks like. You know, there is a beautiful side of evil as well. People would say, well, it's okay to wear this outfit. It's okay to wear really tight clothing. It's okay. Show a little cleavage. It's okay. Go ahead and do this, do that. What does God say? Abstain from all appearance. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. You see, when you become born again, you are sanctified, holy, holy. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's read that last one. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body, soul and spirit, spirit and soul and body, spirit and soul and body, be preserved blameless unto the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Faithful is he who calleth you and also will do it. He will keep you. He will keep you. Peggy writes, hi, Susan. I just saw your video on the queen and I see you have a heart for Jesus. I saw your address for prayer. Would like to request prayer for my marriage. And she goes on to talk about the problems. She says, I have no doubt that he is greater in me than he that is in the world. Please stand with me in agreement that my husband will come back to restore our marriage and 
His relationship with the Father. This is the very first thing these people need to have, is a relationship with the Father. You know, they've gone astray because they don't want to be accountable to God. They've gone astray because they have a rebellious spirit. They've gone astray because they think the grass is greener on some other side of the yard, some other, body, some other person's yard. They want to change their address because they think it's all about them. It's all about pleasing them. But God knows how to reach these people that are lost. He knows exactly what plug to pull. I am remaining believing God for this and that it all be for his glory. You see, Peggy has given up everything for God because Peggy knows, God knows. She is walking in faith, believing that the spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, because she knows God will go in and arrest whatever needs be arresting. As we bind the spirits of evil that are around our families, we draw the bloodline in the name of Jesus, and we say, be thou removed from our family, the ones we lift up right now, naming them in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Amen. And this is where we are today. No matter when they say peace and safety, sudden destruction, no matter if our loved ones walk out the door, God knows how to arrest them. God knows how to shut every door around them. God knows how to reach them. God knows how to take the stone out of their heart. God is not going to force them to choose him. But we must remain abstaining from all appearance of evil. And as they are lost, they are influenced by this. We must leave them to the Lord and trust God knows best. And God will answer our prayers in the name of Jesus. I love you so very much. You know, every time I do these videos, I tell the Holy Spirit, if you're not with me, I don't want to do this it's only by the moving of the Holy Spirit that things are accomplished and so we stand together as we pray together and we believe together that whatsoever things we face if the electricity is shut down tomorrow our hope is in salvation our hope is in Jesus Christ that whatever happens he is enough inside of us to take us all the way in the name of Jesus. Continue to send me your prayer requests, your praise reports. God bless you. I love you. I am praying for you and thank you for your faithful giving to the ministry in Jesus name. Have a blessed day wherever you are. Jesus' name.